Today on an all new Dr. Phil. From pageant queen to entitled teen. Did she get her keys? Yes, yeah, she did. Are you kidding me? Spoiled beyond belief. My mom drives me crazy. Is it her fault that you shoplifted? If she would have gave me money, I wouldn't have had to. She gave you $800. And I spent all of it. She does what she wants. You stole your mother's car at 12. You're smoking dope, getting pass out drunk. Whenever she wants. We made it very clear you cannot stay with your boyfriend out here. Where'd you sleep last night? With my boyfriend. For as long as she wants. Why are you not going to school? I'm homeschooled. No, you're not. I would be if she would get internet. And I am trying to get internet you don't owe her internet what is wrong with you let's do it have a good show everybody here we go i hate to see people suffering and you've hurt long enough stand by dr phil Both of you. Take i'm gonna get you the help that you need three, five four this is gonna three. be a changing day in your life i want you to listen to this tape my first guest sent us Sounds like a wild child, right? A bad kid, troubled, out of control, maybe on drugs. Well, would you believe it if I told you that this screaming audio came from this little beauty queen? Most of us can relate to going through a rough patch with our kids as they hit their teenage years, but Ashley literally went from pageant queen to stealing her mother's car at 12, having sex at 14, doing drugs, shoplifting, busting out car windshields, and has said she could strangle her mother with her bare hands. Now, her mother, Stephanie, is in constant fear that Ashley may actually kill her, but she says, frankly, she's too afraid to even call the police. Ashley was a very loving, fun little girl. She was just a, a very happy child. I got Ashley involved in the pageants because it was just a thing that all the moms and kids seemed to do in the town that we lived in. She couldn't wait to get her nails done, hair done, makeup done. She loved it. Ashley won several pageants. She wasn't shy at all. She was 13 when she entered her last pageant. She just didn't seem to care anymore. Ashley met this boy and he was 18 at the time. She lost her virginity to him. The first thing I wanted to do was press charges. He was a very bad kid. He would steal, smoke dope, took pills. The first time that I really found out that Ashley had had alcohol was probably at the age of 14. I didn't start believing that Ashley was smoking dope until I found the evidence. You cannot tell me that you have not been smoking marijuana and stuff because I have found it. I opened the box and there was some marijuana seeds. That's not mine. That's not mine. Ashley's behavior was continuously getting worse and worse. When Ashley doesn't get her way, she's screaming and hollering. Give me the key! I've got to leave before I do something bad. And then she starts breaking things in my house. One time she kicked in my windshield. She just shoved the glass and it shattered and she kept on kicking it. She gets so angry. You made me go crazy! That's when she'll usually jump on me, grabbing at my hair or hitting my head. Some of the worst things that Ashley says is, you know, I wish you were dead. I could strangle you. I do think that Ashley could kill me. You're my problem! Okay, um, we listened at the beginning with her screaming bloody murder, give me my keys, give me my keys. I'm going crazy, I'm about to pass out, give me my keys. Did she get her keys? Yes, she did. Okay, here, here's rule number one. Remember this for the rest of your life. You do not reward bad behavior. You do not reward bad behavior. I don't care if they're two, three, four, 15, 25, 46, 
whatever, you do not reward bad behavior. Because behaviors that get rewards tend to repeat, right? Right. That child threw that fit to get those keys. So A, you rewarded bad behavior. B, you then in that state of mind put her behind a 5,000 pound missile. She's obviously out of control, upset, yelling and screaming, so let's put her on the highway. Are you kidding me? No, I'm wrong. Let's take a look at her behaviors. Okay, at 12, she stole her mom's car to go party. You have a 12 year old child, 12 year old child stealing a car, no consequence. All right, let's go to 13. She began dating an 18 year old boy. Are you kidding me? And you said, oh, I don't want you to do that. But she did. Oh, yeah. Right? Constantly. And okay, my back you're now whatever. bordering on contributing to the delinquency of a minor right. and gross neglect mm -hmm. as a parent. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it not only involves her. Now you could be criminally involved here. You hear me? You hear what I'm saying? Age 14, she starts having sex, admits no protection. Right? Started smoking pot, illegal. Friends brought her home throwing up drunk. Any consequence? No. No. She caught shoplifting. $100 pair of jeans in Memphis. She had just given her $800 to buy a bunch of wardrobe. But she steals that. Any consequence? They didn't prosecute, and you didn't punish. Age 15, she kicks out the windshield of your car in a fit of rage till it shattered. She kicked your door till it was damaged so much it wouldn't close. She had tied shut with a rope. Yep, to get home. She dented your car by throwing rocks at it. She hit and jumped on you during fights. Uh, a brother had to pull her off. Neighbors get involved. She's destroyed furniture, lamps, computer, punched holes in the wall, and still you do nothing. We got involved in counseling and stuff and tried to keep her away from certain kids at times. And um, mm -hmm. it, um, if she'd stay away from the certain people doing the things she was doing, it seemed like, you know, she would do good for a while and then it would be back to the same crowd again. Mm -hmm. Age 15, there was a canoe incident. She's drunk in a canoe. Yep. With another girl and an 18-year-old boy. Two boys. You get there, they're still drunk. She gets enraged. She hits you in the head while you're driving. Right. Uh, she kicked the windshield until it shattered. This is the yes. second time. Yes, that's, that's happened. Right. Two windshields. Kicked the passenger door. No longer closes. Age 16, she withdraws from school. Yeah. And you were okay with it. You said okay. You you, you said we're going to homeschool you. Yeah. Like because what you want she is just, more direct time with her because it's working so well. She just wouldn't go to school. I mean, every day I got to work, she did, always did, called did, me. Did, and, you, did you have any inkling that she was going to do homeschool? Did, did you really believe you're going to sit down and take her through geography? No. I mean, seriously. So basically, you just let her quit school. You found alcohol in her car. Yes. And she demanded a new car. Yes, yeah, she constantly Oh, God, a tell car. me you did not get her a new car. No, Thank I haven't. You. Thank you, Lord. She failed a drug test a month ago for pot. She's caught with pot high numerous times. You, you found her at home with this 21-year-old boy. And uh, then you found a gun in her car. A gun. Yes, a gun. A gun in her car, and it belonged to the 21-year-old? Yes. Yes. So she's with an armed 21-year-old. Now, you're afraid that she could hurt you. She could oh, yeah. kill you in a fit of rage. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, now she's armed. You know, it was just last month, I interviewed a girl named Erin Caffey. She's serving two life sentences plus 25 years because she had her boyfriend and his hunting buddy kill her entire family that. when she was just 16 years old, the same age as Ashley. It does happen. Everybody take a look at this. You'll remember this. An attack on a Range County family left a mother and her two sons dead and a father in the hospital. Police say Penny Caffey and her 8 and 13 year old sons were shot and stabbed multiple times before dying. The house was then set on fire. 16-year-old Erin Caffey, she's the victim's daughter, has been arrested. To practically decapitate your mother, to shoot and stab your brothers to death. This is where they shot him in the face. You wanted them dead. You gave the command. See it, girls? 
she kind of even looks like your daughter. I interviewed her at the Hilltop Unit at Gatesville Prison in Texas, where she sits until she's, what, 60, 70 years old. I thought about it when the first thing I, when I found the gun. You understand, I believe that you have taught her there are no boundaries. You have taught her what is okay. You have rewarded bad behavior. And that has to stop today, right now. Up next, we're going to hear what Ashley has to say about her threats to her mother's life and her own self-destructive behavior. Did Stephanie's sweet little girl really go from sweet pageant queen to out-of-control teen just out of nowhere? Or is there something deeper going on here? We'll be right back. Did you demand, I'm not doing my schoolwork unless you get me a new car. Mm -hmm. And you're saying well, you don't like her. You better be glad you're not living in my house. You wouldn't even have new shoes. And later. Mama, please. Please don't make me leave. I don't want to leave you. Please don't make me go. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Your husband cheated on you. An affair with another woman. You forced yourself on me, Jeffrey. Every time I was consensual. Turns ugly. One of you is lying. Now. Did you admit that you got pregnant on purpose? No. She did. A bitter custody battle. I had to call the police to go get my kid. You're only saying it for custody. You're lying for custody. I'm going to tell you oh, how it is. Oh You're not even listening. I'm going to tell all of you people. Tomorrow, then on Monday. You I killed you the boy. I got acquitted. Their son OD'd. I didn't think he was drinking. He was standing with a drink in his hand, and you didn't think he was drinking? That's Monday. since the time she could walk. But now her mother, Stephanie, says her little pageant princess is stealing cars, doing drugs, and has become so violent she fears that one day her own daughter may kill her. Ashley says that growing up, she may have been a pageant queen, but her life inside her home was anything but royal. And it's her mother that's the problem. Listen. When I was growing up, my mom and dad did not get along at all. I saw my dad hit my mom quite often. I was scared. My mom, she had a black eye when she was pregnant with me. It makes me feel like he didn't want me to be here. My dad went to jail and rehab. He was on drugs the whole time I was growing up. My dad's been diagnosed as bipolar. I think I may be bipolar. I get so mad at the simplest things. My mom drives me crazy. Whenever she leaves for work in the morning, she'll text me nonstop. If I leave the house, she literally texts my phone about a thousand times. You wouldn't have to text me all the time if you would just listen to me whenever I tell you where I'm at, instead of asking me every five minutes where I'm at, who I'm with, what I'm doing. My mom and I have gotten physical. I never punched her in the face or anything. It was like in the arm. It wasn't as hard as I could hit her. It was just trying to get my point across. She'll threaten me with the cops. She threatens me with Juvie all the time. She said that she found a gun in my car, but it was my old boyfriend's gun. She just made a huge deal out of it. I know how to use a gun, but I didn't plan on using it. She says that I need help, but she needs help too. What do you think about your behavior? How, how do you think you're doing just, you know, generally speaking, as somebody your age? I think, I'm, I think I'm doing good with everybody besides her. Why are you having such a problem with her? She pushes me to my limits. Like, she knows exactly what to do to make me mad. Like, as soon as I leave the house, she starts blowing up my phone constantly texting me, wanting to know where I'm at. And so she doesn't trust you? Yeah, she doesn't Are you trust trustworthy? Me I am now. I used to not be. Because you all. stole a car at 12. 
at 13, you're dating an 18-year-old boy. Is, is that okay? No. You're having unprotected sex, smoking dope, getting passed out drunk. Is that okay? No. So why should she trust you? What, what because trust I is earned? How, how have you earned her trust? Because I don't do any of that anymore. Oh, you just quit. You're you're all good. Where'd you sleep last night? With my boyfriend. I didn't get you and your boyfriend a room here. I got you a room with your mother. I can't be around her. Because we made it very clear that you could not stay with your boyfriend. You you wanted to bring your boyfriend out here. Your boyfriend came. We said you cannot stay with your boyfriend. But you blew that off. So you say you get along with your mother. The only, mother's the only one you don't get along with. You didn't respect our rules and guidelines either, did you? I guess not. Well, I guess not. I mean, you stayed with your boyfriend, and the agreement was you wouldn't do that. The agreement was you would stay with your mother. Correct? So you lied to us straight out. I mean, I didn't expect to come out here and have to deal with her gropping at me the whole time. Why? You said she bowls your phone up, she drives you crazy, she makes you crazy every day, every minute of your life. Why would you think it would be different out here? I was hoping if I could just get away from home that everything would be different. But I thought she was the problem. She is. Well, you brought her with you, so why would you predict anything different? Because maybe if I got away and, like, I couldn't leave the house or whatever, then we wouldn't be arguing. Because we don't ever argue until I want to leave. If I would just sit at home with her all the time, we'd get along perfectly. Yeah, we, we heard you wanting to leave um, earlier at the top of the show. I want to play that again and get your reaction to it. This is what we played at the top of the show. think about that I sound crazy but y'all don't understand what she does to make me do that okay. it's not just me. Well, help me understand okay I was that night that we had that problem I was sitting in my room getting ready I was putting on my makeup getting ready to leave she came in my room and she was sitting there in my ear yelling at me calling me a dope head and everything else. And then she took my key and I didn't know it. It was laying on my bed and she grabbed it off my bed after she was yelling at me and I told her to get out. And that's why mm -hmm. I got so mad because I was trying to get along with her. I was trying. That's your excuse for that night, which is absolutely no excuse at all. Do you understand that it is inappropriate to speak to a parent in that tone? Whether you're it's frustrated or whether you're not, do you get that that's not okay? I get it, but it's not okay for her to do the things that she does to me either. Is it her fault that you shoplifted? If she gave me money, I wouldn't have had to. She just gave you $800 for a wardrobe. And I spent all of it. This May on Dr. Phil. You don't know your information. I've been trying to end the trial. It's a month of dramatic interventions. My mother is more attached to her junk than her kids. I don't believe I'm a hoarder. Oh, my God. These are things that you've saved. You just never know when you might need a wheel. I did not set the house on fire to kill my children. Am I going to get my word to talk? This is my story. This is just not what I came on this show for. This May on Dr. Phil. When you stole the car, you didn't get punished. You dated an 18-year-old boy at 13. She did nothing. At 14, you're having unprotected sex, smoking dope, coming home, throwing up, drunk, One and time. shoplifting. I mean... Is it her fault that you shoplifted? No. Is it her fault that you got passed out money, drunk? I wouldn't have had to. She just gave you $800 for a wardrobe. I do my homework. <laughs> $800, and I spent all of it. Are you justifying shoplifting from a store? I would have never done it if I wouldn't have been with the people I was with. They talked me into it. Okay. 
So you act crazy and scream like that because your mother pesters you. You shoplift because the friends you're with. So apparently you're very easily led. I guess. Or triggered. How about smoking dope? The only reason I ever smoked dope was to just... So everything, like, it was the only thing that made me feel okay. It was the only thing that would calm my nerves. I never even smoked dope until she would make me mad. Until we had an argument, I wouldn't do it. I never smoked dope until me and her started arguing about a year ago, nonstop. Okay. And um, I never, like, it wasn't... But just, it calms you down. Yeah, it calms me down. So you apparently down. weren't smoking it at 15 when you kicked the windshield out of her car. No. Okay, when you dented her car by throwing rocks at it. Do those behaviors seem okay to you under any theory whatsoever? Then tell me why you think you do that. Because she pushes me. Nobody else can do it. Like, she knows exactly the things to say to me to, do, to make me go off. Like, so you don't have an ability to modulate your emotions with her? No. You, you just, you just... I get along perfect with everybody except her. But you her. just can't be with her? I just can't be with her. You, you quit school? I'm homeschooled. No, you're not. I would be if she would get internet. You're not homeschooled. You just I've, quit school. I've told you a million times that I want to do my school. Yeah, if you get a new car. If you get internet. Wow. No, you may need the internet. I don't know what you're doing. I mean, I, you don't. Can't, I can't. But do did any you of demand my... a new car, or you won't do your schoolwork? I I want a new car. Yeah, and she's told me that she'll get me a new car. But and did you lied. demand? I'm not doing my schoolwork unless you get me a new car. Mm -hmm. In what alternate universe <laughs> does your behavior tell you that you are entitled to a new car? I don't know. Why, given your behavior... Because she told me that she'd get me one. I, I don't care if she told you she was going to build it herself. <laughs> Under what theory do you think this kind of behavior gets you a new car? I don't know. It, it, and you're saying when you don't like her, you better be glad you're not living in my house. You wouldn't even have new shoes. <laughs> let alone a new car. You failed a drug test, you come home high, and now there's a gun in your car. The hell are you doing with a gun in your it car? It wasn't my gun. I went and picked up my ex-boyfriend and took him to the pawn shop so he could pick it up. He accidentally left it in my car. I didn't even know it was in there. She always snoops in my car. So she went, before she went to work, looked in my car and found a gun and automatically thinks I'm crazy. Well, it's a good thing she did go snoop in your car and find a gun because you say you don't so. even know it was there. Do you understand the penalty in your state for driving around with a concealable weapon it's a felony you get pulled over on a routine traffic stop they look in there and see nine millimeter automatic girl you got a felony gun charge against you have you physically attacked your mother how do you feel about that you can talk through the tears it's okay i don't mind how do you feel about attacking your mother I don't really feel bad because she she made me mad enough to do it. I, I wouldn't ever hurt her on purpose. Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but they don't know how she acts. They oh, don't know. Oh, let me tell you, I spent the entire first segment of this show talking to her about everything she's doing wrong and everything she's not doing right. Trust me. I've taken her inventory. It is a dead heat horse race between you're doing a worse job at being a daughter or she's doing a worse job at being a mother. And you are the absolute poster girl for the entitled teen. You think you are entitled to have a new car, entitled to go where you want, entitled to come home when you want to come home and do what you do and do what you want to do, right? You just feel like I do what I want to do. Not go really, but, but like, I just don't want anything to do with her. So you got it here in writing that I promise you will be dead. 
I've said that so many and times. And then you got a gun in your car. This 18 year old that she was seeing when she was, he was 18 when she was 14. He's 21 now, right? She was 13. 13 and he was 18. Why is he not in jail? She would have to be the one to come and do all kinds of testing and talk to her and she never would go. You never asked me to go, yeah, but. Actually. You know what, that's yeah, just that's absolutely not walking. true. And, and I, but I'm gonna to talk to the sheriff's office. We're gonna find out who at the sheriff's office told you that as a parent, you don't have the right to prosecute someone for sexually molesting your daughter. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna find out who that is because there'll be a report down there and we're gonna find out what they said to you. I got a sneaking suspicion it's maybe not quite as clear as what you're saying. Let's take a look at some of your text messages that the two of you have shared. I, I, I have those. I um, wish I had mine from her. I, I, I've got them here, but you, you can go get That's whatever just... you want off your phone. Um, okay, so, so Stephanie says you are to be home at 11, and I'm not playing. I'm not giving you a dime as long as you act the way you do. You respond, F you, bitch. Did I read that right? Mm -hmm. Then you respond, you will see. Ooh. <laughs> then you write, I hope you blanking die, bitch which you say, go ahead and blame me, but you try to make me look like I'm the bad person. I'm not lying for you or anybody. Here's another one. You say, I've got a knot on my head from you. You respond, good. You're about to have two black eyes to go along with, bitch. To which you say, I haven't talked to blank but I told you he knows everything you do. Then you say the condoms were blanks from where he put blank in it to take a drug test, idiot. And no, the pack in my jacket is something to lose weight, you stupid bitch. Look it up. She found a pack of like sprinkle stuff, you're supposed to put it on your food to lose weight. I don't know, one of my friends gave it to me and it had literally been in there for a year and she found it and she was like, this is dope. Like she, I don't know, like if, if dope comes in a little packet that says sprinkles on it, then I don't know. Another exchange, you say, I don't need help. What do I need help for? You being a blank nosy bitch, blank you, then you say, kick my ass, I'm done with your god dang stupid ass I wish I had the messages that she sends to me because if I would have known she was gonna bring all these, I would have brought all mine because it don't say the ones that she sent to me. See, everybody only gets the part where I'm acting crazy, but it's fine. Then you say, hell no, you will see, go ahead and keep telling blank and blank stuff. I promise you will be dead. I got a knot on my head from you. So you got it here in writing that I promise you will be dead. I've said that so many and times. And then you got a gun in your car. I didn't even know the gun. I don't. If you can tell me one thing about weed that is worse than alcohol, I'll stop smoking. But it has to be 100% proven fact, not any bull blank you come up with that you think is true. Does it matter? You're 16. It's illegal to be doing either or both. She wouldn't make such a big deal out of me drinking alcohol because, you know, whenever I used to hang out with my old friends, I would tell you I was going to a party and you wouldn't say nothing about it. You wouldn't say one thing about it. So don't act like this is all my fault. You let me get away with it for too long. And all good things come to an end. Uh, next, Ashley jumped on her mother so hard she thinks she broke her wrist. We're going to find out why and what I want Stephanie and Ashley to know when we come back.
Why are you not going to school? Because I don't have internet. I am trying to get internet. You can check and see. It doesn't matter. You She's don't owe her internet. internet. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Your husband cheated on you. An affair with another woman. You forced yourself on me, Jeffrey. Every time I was consensual. Turns ugly. One of you is lying. Now. Did you admit that you got pregnant on purpose? No. She did. A bitter custody battle. I had to call the police to go get my kid. You're only saying it for custody. You're lying for custody. I'm going to tell you how it is. You're not even listening. I'm going to tell all of you people. Tomorrow, then on Monday. You Honey, killed you the boy. I got acquitted. Their son OD'd. I didn't think he was drinking. He was standing with a drink in his hand, and you didn't think he was drinking? That's Monday. Get your hands off of me. I'm going to have you shoot. locked up tonight. You're, you're, you're not putting mouth. your hands on me again. You've already broke my wrist. <laughs> no! Okay. No! Well, that was recorded during a physical fight between Ashley and her mom, Stephanie. You heard Stephanie say Ashley broke her wrist. So what happened here? It was, it was at one time when I was trying to get out the door, and um, she was pushing and shoved me. And I mean, I just I thought she did the way it felt. I mean, it didn't end up being broke, but the way it had felt at the time, I thought she had. By the way, why did you not want to come to the show this morning once you got up? Because she starts blowing up my phone whenever she knew I was awake. Now, how did I know you were awake? Because I answered. If I was asleep, I wouldn't have answered my phone. I... Answer my question. Uh, just, she stresses me out. I don't want to, like, I'm just so ready to go home so I can just go to sleep and not worry about her. That's your problem. You don't ever want to talk to me about anything. You, I've you, tried. You, no, when it, no you whenever stay away I come, from me. Whenever for I everything, come home, Ashley, we have had no trouble here except you've you've stayed away from me ever since we got out because here. I asked, and I did nothing. I asked you to buy me one thing I want, and I get griped at for it. Why would I come to? Why would I come to California if I'm not going to get one single thing? Oh, you got money to go. I gave you money. So you you feel like since you agreed to do this, that you should be rewarded. She should give you money to buy something. I mean, why would you come to California if she's not gonna buy you something? Because- That's what you said, I can play it back. I, like, I can't, I couldn't even go down the street and buy something to eat. So, I mean, I needed money. Just to I go, gave you money. Just to go, I wanted to go to Ripley's Believe It or Not and everything. You had and money. Yeah, I know. I went and I spent all my money on it. The way I see this is probably more unbelievable than anything you saw there. <laughs> Why are you not going to school? Because, well, for one reason, I had problems with all the other girls and then my brother refused to take me to school last year. So I didn't have a ride to school. Why are you not going to school? <laughs> because I don't have internet. I, I'm not going to a public school, so. Why are you not going to public school? Because it's too much drama. I tried to put her in a private school too. And no, you haven't. Yeah, oh I talked God. to you oh, about no, that. Oh no, stop before. talking. I just want internet. So She's going to be it. your teacher, or you just want the internet so you can train yourself. Well, that's so, not how it works. See, you I mean, don't I get to do teachers. it the way you want to do it. There are laws. There are rules. You're required to go to school. It is school. You're not doing it. Because I don't have internet. Then you aren't being homeschooled. Oh, that's not my Which means fault. you are a dropout. That's her fault. Then go to school. And I am trying to get internet. You can check and see the place. No, it right. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You She's don't owe her it. internet. <laughs> what is wrong with you? By the way, while we've been out here, my production staff has contacted the sheriff's office that you told us about. And they said no reports were ever filed from Stephanie. Her child would not have had to been in attendance to file. They were telling me about that while you were apologizing for not having internet and telling me I could check it out like I care. I did go and talk you to a lady You don't cop. owe her internet. You don't owe her internet. Her job is to get up in the morning 
and get dressed and go to school and sit there like everybody else and do her work like everybody else and turn it in like everybody else, or she is truant and you are negligent. It's just that simple. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get, I don't get y'all's reasoning. She is incredibly entitled and you are just going along with it. I don't understand what the big deal in me going to public school and being homeschooled is because there's tons of people that get homeschooled. Yes, but you're not one of them. Because I don't have internet. And I don't care why, you are not going to school. You are currently in violation <laughs> of the guess. law. You are violating substance abuse laws, gun possession laws, and educational laws. Other than that, you're doing great. Oh, I forgot about the shoplifting. You're a battered parent. You're getting bullied, buffaloed, and beaten. You're going to continue to be a doormat for this abusive child. Th this isn't working, right? You, you don't know how to parent her. It's just interesting just in the time sitting here. She throws out bait and you take it. It's, it's, I was talking about this. We have an advisory board here. Mm -hmm. And I discuss these cases with various members of the advisory board at times. And the head of our advisory board is Dr. Frank Lawless. And he's actually written a book called Not My Child. Um, and it's really a great guide for people. Because everybody thinks you read about kids in the paper and you, you hear all of that sort of thing. And you think... Uh, Wow, you know, not, not my child, um, but the, the bottom line is, this is your child. I'm going to give you a copy of this book. You, you need to read it. But it's just an absolute manual, a guide to keep your kids from spiraling uh, into drugs and rebellion and addictions and all sorts of things. Now, here's what's clear to me. She has huge entitlement issues. She has huge rage issues. She has very little insight and has learned that there are no boundaries and she can do whatever she wants to do whenever she wants to do it because you have conspired to teach her that. Which means what I predict if you take her home is more of what you've what you've had so far. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. What I predict from you, until you get proper parental training, till you get your self-esteem up off the floor and stand tall like a leadership parent, is you're going to continue to be a doormat for this abusive child. You are a battered parent. You're a battered parent. You're getting bullied, buffaloed, and beaten. And so you've just caved, just try to, you know, contain her, try to make her happy. That's not working. I recommend highly that you put her in a structured environment where she cannot lean on her own understanding. Now, I, 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 I'm willing to help you do that. I'm willing to make a gift to you of that kind of a placement at what I believe is one of the top top facilities in the country called the Center for Discovery. And the director, Matt Polachek, is right here. I asked Matt to come. It's a structured therapeutic residential treatment center. They got a 17-year history of working with troubled, out-of-control teenagers. She is a troubled, out-of-control teenager. If you go home let me tell you what's going to happen. She is not going to go to school. She is not going to get her education. She is going to take up with anybody that will have her. She's going to wind up 17, pregnant, and you're going to be raising the child while she's going out and partying. That's where you're headed. Unless you have the backbone to say, this stops here, this stops now. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and 
exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on DrPhil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. She's either going to wind up in jail or she's going to wind up in a treatment center. I'm offering you a treatment center. What do you want? I don't want to do it. Are you willing to do that? Yes. Now, what we're getting ready to do is we're going to start the yelling and the screaming. I'm going crazy. Give me my keys. Blah, 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 blah. Matthew, do you, do you believe, Dr. Palachek, that this is a situation that requires your intervention? Yeah, we need to break this cycle, and we need to separate the two of them and then reintegrate them and work on the communication and... So but you good. understand, she has as much work to do as she does. She has to be as involved and learn how to parent as she does, or you're going to send her right back to the toxic environment. Correct. In my opinion, your belligerent, arrogant, defiant attitude that nobody's going to tell me what to do is you just met some old boy that's calling your bluff. And now when I say that, you go, no, 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 wait, whoa, 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 time out. I'll, be, I'll do what I say. Uh, it's okay. Can right. we just talk first? That's the way it's always. No, I it. just want to talk to you before. I just, want, I just want you to understand how I feel without everybody hearing it. I want to talk to you because we've never had that chance. What you want to do is get her behind closed doors no, so you manipulate her I, and do whatever that. you want to do. If she wants to send me, she can send me. It's not up to me. You, you do whatever you want, want to do. I just want her but, to understand where I'm coming from. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the point that all of a sudden this is getting really real to her. You know, she was a little miss, do it my way and kiss my ass. And then all of a sudden you've got reinforcements and she said, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. I'm offering you the opportunity to go to Center for Discovery with Dr. Matt Polachek right there and for her to have a stay there, and I don't know how long that will be. What I need from you is a commitment that you will do that and you will stay with it. I think it is your only hope. And she can thank you for it someday or she can hate you for it forever, but it still will give her the best chance to get her head on straight. And it gives us a chance to get you to get your head on straight. A special thanks to Center for Discovery and their program director, Do Dr. Matt Polachek, for their help with Ashley. Thanks for being here. Don't come with you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, guys. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, from pageant queen to entitled teen. Did she get her keys? Yes, she did. Are you kidding me? Spoiled beyond belief. My mom drives me crazy. Is it her fault that you shoplifted? If she would have gave me money, I wouldn't have had to. She gave you $800. And I spent all of it. She does what she wants. You stole your mother's car at 12. You're smoking dope, getting pass out drunk. Whenever she wants. We made it very clear you cannot stay with your boyfriend out here. Where'd you sleep last night? With my boyfriend. For as long as she wants. Why are you not going to school? I'm homeschooled. No, you're not. I would be if she would get internet. And I am trying to get internet. You don't owe her internet! What is wrong with you? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. Three, five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life.
want you to listen to this tape my first guest sent us. until you, you learn to calm down. I'm, I'm trying to be calm. I'm trying to. I'm about to go crazy. I'm about to pass out. I'm, just give me my key. I've got to go. Sounds like a wild child, right? A bad kid, troubled, out of control, maybe on drugs. Well, would you believe it if I told you that this screaming audio came from this little beauty queen? Most of us can relate to going through a rough patch with our kids as they hit their teenage years, but Ashley literally went from pageant queen to stealing her mother's car at 12, having sex at 14, doing drugs, shoplifting, busting out car windshields, and has said she could strangle her mother with her bare hands. Now, her mother, Stephanie, is in constant fear that Ashley may actually kill her, but she says, frankly, she's too afraid to even call the police. Ashley was a very loving, fun little girl. She was just a, a very happy child. I got Ashley involved in the pageants because it was just a thing that all the moms and kids seemed to do in the town that we lived in. She couldn't wait to get her nails done, hair done, makeup done. She loved it. Ashley won several pageants. She wasn't shy at all. She was 13 when she entered her last pageant. She just didn't seem to care anymore. Ashley met this boy and he was 18 at the time. She lost her virginity to him. The first thing I wanted to do was press charges. He was a very bad kid. He would steal, smoke dope, took pills. The first time that I really found out that Ashley had had alcohol was probably at the age of 14. I didn't start believing that Ashley was smoking dope until I found the evidence. You cannot tell me that you have not been smoking marijuana and stuff because I have found it. I opened the box and there was some marijuana seeds. That's not mine. That's not mine. Ashley's behavior was continuously getting worse and worse. When Ashley doesn't get her way, she's screaming and hollering. Give me the key! I've got to let you before I do something bad! And then she starts breaking things in my house. One time she kicked in my windshield. She just shoved the glass and it shattered and she kept on kicking it. She gets so angry. You're making me go crazy! That's when she'll usually jump on me, grabbing at my hair or hitting my head. Some of the worst things that Ashley says is, you know, I wish you were dead. I could strangle you. I do think that Ashley could kill me. You're my problem! Okay, um, we listened at the beginning with her screaming bloody murder. Give me my keys. Give me my keys. I'm going crazy. I'm about to pass out. Give me my keys. Did she get her keys? Yes, she did. Okay, Here, here's rule number one. Remember this for the rest of your life. You do not reward bad behavior. You do not reward bad behavior. I don't care if they're 2, 3, 4, 15, 25, 46, whatever. You do not reward bad behavior. Because behaviors that get rewards tend to repeat, right? Right. That child threw that fit to get those keys. So A, you rewarded bad behavior. B, you then, in that state of mind, put her be behind a 5,000-pound missile. She's obviously out of control, upset, yelling and screaming, so let's put her on the highway. Are you kidding me? No, I'm wrong. Let's take a look at her behaviors. Okay, at 12, she stole her mom's car to go party. You have a 12-year-old child, 12-year-old child, stealing a car, no consequence. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, let's go to 13. She began dating an 18-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And you said, oh, I don't want you to do that. But she did. Oh, yeah. Right? Constantly. And okay, my back you're now bordering on contributing to the delinquency of a minor right. and gross neglect mm -hmm. as a parent. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, it not only involves her... Now you could be criminally involved here. 
You hear me? You know what I'm saying? Age 14, she starts having sex, admits no protection. Started smoking pot, illegal. Friends brought her home, throwing up drunk. Any consequence? No. No. She caught shoplifting. $100 pair of jeans in Memphis. She had just given her $800 to buy a bunch of wardrobe. But she steals that. Any consequence? They didn't prosecute, and you didn't punish. Age 15, she kicks out the windshield of your car in a fit of rage till it shattered. She kicked your door till it was damaged so much it wouldn't close. She had tied shut with a rope. Yep, to get home. She dented your car by throwing rocks at it. She hit and jumped on you during fights. Uh, a brother had to pull her off. Neighbors get involved. Right. She's destroyed furniture, lamps, computer, punched holes in the wall, and still you do nothing. We got involved in counseling and stuff and tried to keep her away from certain kids at times. And um, mm-hmm. it, um, if she'd stay away from the certain people doing the things she was doing, it seemed like, you know, she would do good for a while. And then it would be back to the same crowd again. Mm-hmm. Age 15, there was a canoe incident. She's drunk in a canoe. Yep. With another girl and an 18-year-old boy. Two boys. You get there. They're still drunk. She gets enraged. She hits you in the head while you're driving. Right. Uh, she kicked the windshield until it shattered. This is the yes. second time. Yes, that's, that's second happened. Time. Two windshields. Kicked the passenger door. No longer closes. Age 16, she withdraws from school. Yeah. And you were okay with it. You said, okay. You you, you said we're going to homeschool you. Yeah. Like, because what you want she is just, more direct time with her because it's working so well. She just wouldn't go to school. I mean, every day I got to work, she did, always did, called did, me. Did, and, you, did you have any inkling that she was going to do homeschool? Did you really believe you're going to sit down and take her through geography? No. I mean, seriously. So basically, you just let her quit school. You found alcohol in her car. Yes. And she demanded a new car. Yes, she constantly Oh, demands God, a tell car. me you did not get her a new car. No, Thank I haven't. You. Thank you, Lord. She failed a drug test a month ago for pot. She's caught with pot She's high numerous times. You, you found her at home with this 21-year-old boy. And uh, then you found a gun in her car. A gun. Yes, a gun. A gun in her car, and it belonged to the 21-year-old? Yes. Yes. So she's with an armed 21-year-old. Now, you're afraid that she could hurt you. She could oh, kill yeah. you in a fit of rage. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, now she's armed. You know, it was just last month I interviewed a girl named Erin Caffey. She's serving two life sentences plus 25 years because she had her boyfriend and his hunting buddy kill her entire family that. when she was just 16 years old, the same age as Ashley. It does happen. Everybody take a look at this. You'll remember this. An attack on a Range County family left a mother and her two sons dead and a father in the hospital. Police say Penny Caffey and her 8- and 13-year-old sons were shot and stabbed multiple times before dying. The house was then set on fire. 16-year-old Erin Caffey, she's the victim's daughter, has been arrested. You practically decapitate your mother, shoot and stab your brothers to death. This is where they shot him in the face. You wanted them dead. You gave the command. You see a girl? She kind of even looks like your daughter. I interviewed her at the Hilltop Unit at the Gatesville Prison in Texas, where she sits until she's, what, 60, 70 years old. I thought about it when the first thing I, when I found the gun. You understand, I believe that you have taught her there are no boundaries. You have taught her what is okay. You have rewarded bad behavior. And that has to stop today, right now. Up next, we're going to hear what Ashley has to say about her threats to her mother's life and her own self-destructive behavior. Did Stephanie's sweet little girl really go from sweet pageant queen to out-of-control teen just out of nowhere? Or is there something deeper going on here? We'll be right back. Did you demand, I'm not doing my schoolwork unless you get me a new car? Mm -hmm. And you're saying you don't like her. You better be glad you're not living in my house. You wouldn't even have new shoes. And later, 
Mama, please. Please don't make me leave. I don't, don't want to leave you. Please don't make me go. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Your husband cheated on you. An affair with another woman. You forced yourself on me, Jeffrey. Every time was consensual. Turns ugly. One of you is lying. Now. Did you admit that you got pregnant on purpose? No, she did. A bitter custody battle. I had to call the police to go get my kid. You're only saying it for custody. You're lying for custody. I'm going to tell you how it is. You're not even listening. I'm going to tell all of you 